Welcome friends to the online course on HSC practices in offshore and petroleum engineering. We are discussing about lecture on module 2 where we are focusing on operational safety Today in lecture 8, we are going to continue with the problem where we are going to explain the concepts of financing risk. We will talk about the example problem after we understand the Frank Morgan method of risk analysis quantitative. If we look at the last lecture, we slightly rewind and see what we have discussed in the last lecture. We said that risk assessment should have the economic problems associated to it. It should address the whole risk problem in economic perspective. So, Frank and Morgan gave a model in early 80s which we are discussing and we said in the step number 1, after you divide the whole processing plant into various departments, in step number 1, you compute the hazard score, the control score. The hazard score computation is what we call as the first level of risk assessment. Then you compute risk index. Which will be the control score minus the hazard score. The risk index can be positive, can be negative. Of course, ideally it can be 0 as well. So, let us continue with the next step on the same problem or on the same issue. Then we will take up an example and try to understand this. So, in step number 2, After computing the risk index, we are interested to know the relative risk. The relative risk will help you to compare the departments locally in a given plant. So, the objective of this specific step is to rank the departments and not the individual hazards present in the department. This already we have done in step number 1 itself, what we call as first level of risk assessment. We already done that. We want to improve on this. Therefore, we are not interested anymore in ranking the department based on the hazards present in the department. We already know them, but we really wanted to relatively rank the department based on the risk because now we are looking along, along with the hazard, looking along with the hazard, the control measurements, what each department has in place. So, that if at all the hazard scenario gets realized to become a risk or to mature to become a risk, then what are those control measures each department has individually or the whole plant has as a coordination to control, mitigate or avert the happening of the risk itself from the tough and hazard. So, what we said is a control measure. So, for both of these we already said in the last lecture that one can also refer to the standard table given by Frank and Morgan. Or one can also in fact ideally prepare a checklist of their own depending upon the <coughs> expertise, experience and past judgments what they have based upon the case studies occurred or visualized or understood or educated. So, one can prepare the checklist, prepare each group and try to give an hazard score and control score for each department of your choice. In fact, every control or every process industry do have this checklist with them which is prepared based on the expertise and experience personnel 
they have in bold. So, the relative risk which you are going to estimate in the second step essentially aiming to rank the department relatively, but not the hazard percent in each department which has been already done. So, it is an improvement from step number 1. Now, one can ask me a question how relative risk will become important in the scenario of risk evaluation. Now, interestingly let us say you have a department which has got the highest risk index. To be very specific, highest positive value. Okay. What does it mean? Highest positive value means the control measures in the department are extremely good in comparison to the other departments that is what it means. So, as a financer, as an investor, as an employer, as a capitalist, as a owner, as a company CEO, I do not have to invest much towards hazard mitigation reduction to this department. Okay. On this department. Okay. Such departments are called base reference departments. So, amongst the given departments of let us say 6 or 7 or 10, 1 or 2 can also become base departments or base reference departments. Okay. So, their risk scores are considered as base reference for the whole analysis. Now, one can ask me what is the use of identifying the base reference risk scores amongst all the departments. Interestingly, since I am going for a relative risking or relative risk ranking, now I would like to normalize the risk score of all departments with respect to the base department. So, I need to normalize the risk scores of all departments with respect to let us say the best department or with respect to the base reference risk score which I have with me now. So, that is what we are going to do subsequently. So, that is what we are going to do now in this step and therefore, this is done how do you do the normalization it is very simple mathematically subtract <coughs> the risk score of the best department from <coughs> the risk score of the concerned department. Obviously, when you do this, you will notice that the relative risk of the best department will be 0. That is what we are going to do in the second step. So, first step we are finding the risk index, second step we are finding the relative risk ranking by normalizing the scores or risk scores of all departments with respect to the best department. The best department is that department 
whose control scores are much higher than that of the hazard scores or on the other hand whose risk index is highest positive number mathematically. In the next step, we will now compute percentage risk index. This indicates relative contribution of each department to the total risk of the plant. So, the percentage risk index is an indication of contribution of risk of each department to the overall risk of the plant. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important step in risk management. For example, in the given departments of A to E, if you know that let us say the department D is contributing maximum that is the percentage risk index of the department is about let us say 25, which is lower than any other department. Maybe the reference department in this case is B whose is 0, this is a reference department, one of the best departments let us say. So, now it is very clear that the management has to look into or pay attention more to the risk managing issues or hazard management techniques adopted by department D, because department D is the major contributor for the risk of the whole plant. So, for example, the management can think of replacing recruiting new professionals in terms of HSC perspective, invest more or plan to invest more on the control measures what the department is supposed to have, improve more on the maintenance part of machinery in the department which is leading to a very high hazard score. So, there are many issues which can be looked at this level segmentally in each partition of every department which is a very good step towards risk management. Now, as a whole if you do not have a mathematical convergence in terms of arriving at a number which is an indicator of poor or better performance of every department in the whole plant as a manager as an executive you will not be able to corner or coin down a specific department or a specific personnel, set of person in the department to really highlight his weakness and his strength. Therefore, relatively qualitatively talking to each of them, each one of them in a departmental meeting or advising them in general to say that hazard scenario is very bad, training them in general towards risk management will not going to help. We have got to be very specific down the line, we have to be very particular in saying what are those steps they have got to do, why their control scores are very low or on the other hand why their hazard scores are very high. To be very specific why the risk index is so high. Secondly, if you are talking about incentive which I said in the earlier lectures to promote risk you have got to create a feeling that risk need to be adapted, need to be practiced, need to be become a culture. So, for maintaining this practice to promoting this culture, generally management can also start thinking of rewarding people who are maintaining very good risk control mechanisms. So, this particular step will help you to know how amongst the departments you need to create a difference in rewarding or creating incentive for the best department towards risk control or punitively punishing the worst department towards risk control in terms of lack of incentives, because this will create competition amongst the personnel in each department to compete for the best, which will ultimately result in a best way of risk management by itself. Because as I said in the beginning, risk management is always a success only when the people who are at risk 
feel themselves that the risk management is their part of the duty. It is not the employer, it is the employee who has got to take it into heart and practice risk measurements and risk management techniques at every step and every walk of his production line during the processing plant. So, this step will also help you to do a very good management in terms of creating or declaring incentive for the best department and for the worst department. So, that is how generally if you look at the oil company sector, the payrolls, the incentives, the payrolls will have about 3 to 4 bifurcations, the basic salary, the extra work hours what you put plus the incentives towards your achievements. So, this can be one of the segment in the payroll itself that if HSC practices are found to be good, dominantly better other than the departments, then you will be given the following incentives. This, this can be also a part of the HSC policy of the company. Therefore, the company in the beginning stage inculcates the feeling in every employee during recruitment, if he practices risk management or if he, if he follows risk procedures very clearly and avoid hazardous situations in a sector of working, he will be rewarded. So, that is going to be a very interesting way of looking at the risk assessment, which is actually opened out by a mathematical technique given by Frank and Morgan. So, in step number 3, we look at computing, computing the percentage risk index. So, in this step, we convert the risk of each department or the relative risk. <coughs> of each department to a percentage of total risk of the whole plant. That is what we do in step number 3. So, step number 1 we did risk indexing, step number 2 we did risk ranking based on the relative value. Step number 3, we are going to do the percentage risk index and every step is important, every step will give you a very interesting information towards risk mitigation, risk management, risk avoidance, hazard identification all are mingled together. However, as of now, you will really notice and appreciate, you may have a doubt in mind, where is the economic perspective coming into play here, because that is the whole issue what we started with, with the whole model. Let us talk about the slightly, please wait. So, now the total risk of all departments will lead to the total sum of the entire risk of the department. So, the percentage risk index can be mathematically said as, can be mathematically said as relative risk by sum of relative risk sum up from i is equal 1 to n into 100, where the count i will be the number of departments. So, therefore, I get this in percentage that is what I get in step number 3. Let us see what do we get in step number 4. In step number 4, I am going to determine the composite exposure value for each department. What does it mean? Interestingly, this step converts risk into financial terms. So, this is a very important step. Actually, this step estimates the financial risk of each department or the whole plant, which is a very big botheration for the investor. So, now let us see what do you mean by composite exposure value. The composite exposure value may be given 
in any currency, maybe in US dollars, maybe in Indian rupee, I mean any currency, we can say this Indian rupee, any currency. But it is actually a commercial representation, okay? please understand. Now, let us see who or what will be the components of this exposure. So, the term very clearly says risk is always envisaged only when they are exposed. Hazard is a presence or a scenario, risk is a maturity of hazard. So, the person who experiences or getting exposed to risk is only we have got interpretable. That is what we are saying individual risk, societal risk all what we have calculated from the international regulations as we see in the previous lectures. So, the important components based on which the commercial representation of risk will be given is divided into three parts. One is what we call the property value, what we otherwise call as asset of the department. The second could be the downtime cost. I will put this as business interruption. I will explain this. Third could be the personal exposure. Let us explain each one of them in detail to understand how do they contribute to the composite exposure. Let us for example, take the property value. What do you mean by property value or asset of each department? So, each department has an inventory, machinery, equipments, each has a salvage value and the present market price. which accounts for the depreciation of the equipments. Of course, every department maintains this record as a part of SNP that is nothing but stores and purchase. So, every department will clearly have the commercial value of the equipments plants present in the department. Therefore, it is very easy for us to really convert or identify or value the asset of every department. So, there is no big business in uh, big deal in getting this. And obviously, you will know that this may not be common and same for all the departments. Some departments may have this very low, some departments may have this very, very high depending upon the investment what the department made towards the machinery and equipment, stores and plants. The second is rather tricky that is the downtime cost or what we call business interruption. Now, let us say in case there has been an accident or a near miss event, the production line need to be shut down because when there is an accident or an event, you obviously cannot continue with the production. And we all agree that the total outcome of production of the department or the plant, sorry, of the plant is sum of contributions of different departments. Every department should work together in alignment so that the production is maintained. So, the production line will have contributed contributions from different departments. For example, if any one department which is having a very high hazard index or a very poor control measure is likely to face an accident. If it faces an accident, so that will not be contributing to the production line of the department or the plant. So, that is what we say the downtime cost. So, this depends upon how much important is this department in the production chain. Obviously, all departments will not be equally sharing the percentage of production contribution, it varies. So, this is very important. So, this will give you a very clear picture where do you stand. Now, the question is 
if I am belonging to department A, if you belong to department B, if she belongs to department C, everybody would like to say that my department has contributed the maximum for the production line. So, that is not that you, it is your choice. It is actually by the layout of the production line, you are pre-agreed upon that where do you stand as a contributor to the whole production system. For example, drilling and delivery are two departments let us say. Drilling will have more importance because that is where the drilling happens, whereas production is where they are discharging out to the market. Though it is also important, but if you do not drill there is no production and there is no delivery. So, therefore, the importance of the specific department in the production chain is pre-agreed upon in a meeting or in the meetings and we all know where do we stand as a contributor for the whole production system. So, this is also known. The third could be very interesting, it is a personal exposure. I can give an example, let us say your department has only two employees. Let us say employee A may be drawing a salary of 10,000 US dollars, let us say works for 8 hours. Employee B draws a salary of 6,000 US dollars, I am saying monthly. 8 hours. Only two employees are present in one department, let us say D. The person who is drawing a salary of 10,000 dollars a month into 8 months, into 8 months you get a total sum of investment in terms of money which are paying to the employee which includes of course, insurance cover all blah blah every perks etcetera everything is a total value let us say. I know the total investment what I am doing towards these two personnel for an year. So, that is my exposed value in terms of personnel. Obviously, department A has 10 employees each one of them having so many US dollars. So, again they will have a sum. So, obviously, you will see and you will notice that every department depending upon the employees enrolled in the department, hired by the department for a specific condition or the job what the department performs, the personal exposure will vary. And we all agree that the salary or the perks are fixed upon, the nature of job, nature of qualification, nature of experience the personnel have all will be included. Obviously, a person who is very highly experienced and educated and qualified would demand more perks therefore, that will reflect in the salary, that will reflect in the department personal exposure. So, this will be an indication of HR human resource indication to the whole composition. So, you can see here very clearly in the composite exposure value evaluation, three major components are getting involved in the commercial evaluation of risk. What are these components? One, the personnel who are involved in terms of money, in terms of hours, let us say duty hours. Two, how much the department is important because the contribution of the department in the production line is well known, that is what we call business interaction cost. We do not say percentage, we say the cost. Okay, all should be in terms of financial value. And of course, the property or the asset of the department which depends upon the inventory, machinery and equipments the department has and the current market price these for these equipments depending upon the depreciation of these equipments. So, this can be computed. So, all put together will be added and this will give you the commercial value including personnel of the department in the whole plant. So, why it is called composite? Because the nature of three immovable or real value property, downtime which is flexible and dynamic in nature in case the business is interrupted and the personnel which is also dynamic in nature because today you may hire a person A who is of this salary after a month you this person resigns you have to hire another person equivalent to A and his salary may not be the same as this depending upon his availability or his non-availability. So, this again dynamic in nature. So, all these put together are taken under one bracket that is why the word composite comes into play here. Why they are exposed? 
because we are not talking, we are not thinking about paying a person for his qualification, we are talking about paying this person for his exposure hours. For example, if his exposure hours or duty hours are reduced to 4 hours, obviously you will see that the salary paid to this person is also reduced. So, it is all depending upon how many hours he is exposed or he is on board. So, therefore, exposure. Similarly, at how many intervals and cycles and depreciation the machinery is exposed during production line and of course, you will clearly see here this is a direct relationship to exposure because the downtime will always occur only the business interaction will always occur only when the machinery or the whole plant is exposed to the production line. If the plant or the department is not exposed to production line let us say in no business interruption at all. So, all these are related to how much to what degree they are exposed to risk that is why it is called composite exposure. Why value? Because all of them I want them in terms of commercial value, I want them in terms of financial figures may be in dollars, may be in Indian rupee, whatever may be the currency that does not matter, but we are interested in getting the conversion of these algorithms in terms of financial values. Now, you will very clearly see in this step that economic perspective of risk is introduced in the modeling. That is a very important step which Frank and Morgan is really appreciated even today for proposing this kind of model which is very easy and very practical and self understanding model which helps many industries successfully to run. I will give an example, it will be, you will be amazed to know that how simply and easily we can solve this example and we can derive very more important information from a simple problem of this nature. So, in this particular step it is very clear we have understood, I agree that you have understood that how the economic perspective is introduced in risk assessment. We will move on to the next step. So, before we move on to the next step, let us quickly summarize what we have done in this step. The property value is estimated by the replacement cost of all material inventory equipments present in the department which are at risk. Business interruption is computed as the product of units cost of goods in terms of business interruption. For example, if this would have been the production unit produces so many barrels of oil a day by drilling, if so many oils of barrels of oil per day is not produced, what would be the cost or the loss involved because of this department not participating in the production line that is what we are trying to calculate here. Personal exposure is the product of total number of people into the salary or the populated shift and monetary value of each person working in the department. So, we summarize them we say why it is composite, we say why it is exposure and we all agree it is going to be a financial value. Therefore, composite exposure value. Let us move on to step number 5. So, now for each department I have the composite exposure value. I will compute now composite risk for each department. It is nothing but the product of composite exposure value and the percentage risk index of each department. Percentage risk index already we have calculated in the previous step. Composite exposure value we just now calculated in the previous step in step number 4. So, multiply these two value and get the risk converted in terms of financial value. So, now in this step each department will show relative risk with respect to other departments 
in the plant. Now, one may ask me a doubt, one may ask me a question, which I wish one should ask. Sir, relative risk was computed in step number 2 also. First level risk assessment was also done in step number 1 as hazard level. What is fun in doing relative risk once again in step number 5? Very good question, very interesting, you are actually in line with the class. Relative risk in this level is in financial perspective my dear. It is an economic perspective here because I have already converted risk into financial value. Now, I really know which department is going to cost me the maximum loss in terms of money. See, loss can happen in many ways. It can be human loss, it can be equipments and plants and machineries, etcetera. Ultimately, as an investor, as a CEO, as a risk manager, as a risk executive, as an HSC operator, executive, etcetera, my object is to look only into what is the commercial loss I will get? I will land up if an accident is caused. Okay. Who is going to be the black cat amongst the whole departments which is going to be vulnerable to create this accident? So, I am interested in getting the commercial aspect perspective of the whole risk index. As a manager, as an investor, as an insurance authority, as a CEO, as an HSE executive, leader of HSE team, I have to ultimately present the financial terms to my stakeholders. Stakeholders will not understand and agree whether my risk is so many percentage, etc. What is what they will ask me in the board meeting is that, sir, what would be the financial loss if the accident would occur? Can you identify which department is actually causing this trouble? It is not the question of punitive the department or punishing one, it is a question of investing more towards the control scores of the department. So, it means the CEO, the HSC executive, the HSC team will be given an indication that this department is weak amongst all the departments, the control scores are very poor, we should invest more budget to the department towards improving their control mechanisms. So, in the, in the right spirit this is what it is, but however, when you look at the incentive you have to be very careful, you have to be impartial. You have to say department D may be is not performing, department A is performing, therefore, A should be rewarded and D should not be rewarded. That is how the competition can be. You cannot normalize a rewarding concept in terms of looking at the personal capacity of the department, no. So, one way it is bad because it will explore, expose the department who is contributing to the maximum risk of the plant. One way it is very good, it is explicitly showing me which department is contributing to the maximum risk. So, I can be careful to invest more on the control scores of improvement of the department. So, the risk level of the whole plant can be reduced that is the whole objective here. Okay. Very interestingly, very nicely, very smoothly risk which is a mathematical term which is a statistical approach is converted to financial terms by Frank and Morgan in the early 80s. This has been a very successful model for every process industry as recommended by them which we will also use in one of the examples here in this class. So, in step number 5, I am converting or I am estimating relative risk, but this relative risk is different from the earlier steps because this is in terms of economic perspective. <coughs> Therefore, composite risk which I will compute in this step is equal to the composite exposure value. Can I write CEV? because I can say C E V is composite exposure value multiplied by percentage risk index. Okay, I get this step number 5. So, there are 6 steps in Frank and Morgan, the last step is risk ranking. Now, fundamentally one would like to ask a question, sir why do you have to rank the departments? It is not depending upon performance my dear, I am not giving a rank on the best performer of the year, nothing like that. I really wanted to know amongst the 6, 7, 10 departments, who is the most vulnerable black cat 
who is going to contribute to my accident. If at all the loss is going to happen, who will be responsible for this? So, I pay attention to that person more. Okay, that is the point here. So, risk ranking is the final step. In this process, risk ranking is actually based on, based on, I should say only on the composite risk. Now, this is where, which is unique to offshore industry, risk, if you look at the general definition expressed in fatality accident rate, may be individual risk, may be societal risk, all are related to fatality accidents only. It means the number of person exposed working hours for a specific incident or an event and out of which how many people actually died. So, it is all about personal, whereas here the risk ranking in offshore industry is not only personal, because personal is also included. As you see in this specific step, we said personal exposure is a part of composite exposure value. So, personal value is also included, but it also includes asset maintenance, downtime cost, importance and feeling of the department towards risk management. You can say how feeling is included here, because depending upon every level of business interruption, you can always reward the departments. So, rewarding will come only when they perform, they will perform only when they feel. So, risk management has been inculcated through this method as a culture or as a feeling to each department. So, that is a very interesting idea, this is the important goal what we wanted to actually establish in good HSC practices. So, in this specific step, we get the final risk ranking which is purely based only on composite risk. Now, what would be the outcome of this step? There are many outcomes. The first could be you will know which department is weak in terms of control score. You will also know which department had the maximum hazard, I am talking about hazard and is the same department has the maximum risk. It is a very interesting question, I will explain this with an example. Third could be, is the most important department How do you get the most important department? Depending upon the downtime cost involvement on the production line is the most important department is contributor or is contributing to maximum risk. Now, if this question is yes, you have got to revisit the whole plant design once again, you have got to immediately pay attention to the HSE practices and improve certainly the risk level in this department, because this is one of the most important department in the production line and that department is contributing to the maximum risk, you have to be very, very careful because it can cause catastrophic accidents which can result in a very heavy financial loss to the company. However, interestingly, <coughs> if this is not true, then one can say the risk acceptance level, this is where the acceptance actually coming into play in oil and gas industries though the department is contributing risk, but can this risk is acceptable in the whole production line because the contribution of this particular department on the production line is a minimum. So, even there is a risk in this department, the production line will not be affected. It means your business interruption will not cost you a financial loss. You understand how risk is connected to financial terms. So, it is a very interesting diagnosis part and parcel of the problem which has been done by Frank and Morgan model, which is very, very good to realize and understand and feel how every level of risk assessment has been simply done in steps in easy methodology to handle. Okay. So, this the next outcome what we have. The last could be what should be the budget allocation to each department. Now, one can ask me a question, 
sir how this budget allocation can improve the risk management terms now let us say department a department e department d b was a referral department which is control score i mean the risk index is zero reference department best department so obviously should we have to give any budget to the best department so that should be decided <coughs> should we not give or should we give more value the maximum value to the worst department because the department e is showing the maximum risk index therefore the control scores are very bad should we invest more on e to make it better so these are decision points and let us say if e receives the maximum funding e has to distribute this funding amongst these three is it not this is a commercial aspect of the whole problem so therefore the members of this department who are employed will get more incentive so the salary structure will be different from that of people in other departments so your pay structure or your personal exposure value can be really dynamic depending upon the risk assessment tool suggested by frank and morgan it's so very interesting so you can arrive at the such decisions in the board meetings only depending upon one simple example problem which you can really do wonders with the risk assessment tools what has been suggested so far so now it is better that we have got to really understand a problem take an example solve it and then try to work out as a manager as a hsc executive these outcomes from the example problem which we will see in the next lecture thank you very much